Gin Ichimaru's Bankai was one of the most highly anticipated reveals in the history of Bleach. After all, he was a fan favourite character who rarely got the opportunity to fight, as well as being a known prodigy within the story. So people were very eager to see what he could actually do. And so, as the final new Bankai reveal of the Arankar arc, when he finally uttered that phrase at the end of chapter 398, I was extremely excited. After all, Gein was one of my favourite characters as well, and I couldn't wait to see what Kubo had in store for his Bankai. However, I explicitly remember, even from all those years ago, that during my time reading Bleach weekly, this was one of the rare instances of me being actively disappointed by what I saw. I know that at their core, Bankai are effectively just supposed to be bigger, blown out versions of Shikai. Take a look at Senbon Zakura and Senbon Zakura Kagiyoshi, for example. But with Gin's Bankai, Kamishini no Yari, I couldn't believe that was all it was. An even longer version of an already extremely long blade. Not only did it seem quite limited, it felt redundant, especially after Ichigo countered it seemingly so easily and even returned fire. Sure, the double-page spread of Karakura Town being completely sliced in half was really cool and an awesomely over-the-top way of showcasing this Bankai's power quickly, but I was still really let down. What I didn't realise, of course, and what I didn't pick up on at the time, was Gein is a well-known, unreliable narrator. And much like Gein himself, his Bankai is deceptive, and so was Kubo in its presentation, which I really love today. It shows a fantastic and almost profound understanding of one's own character. And so in this video, we're going to take a look at Gin Ichimaru's Bankai Kamishini no Yari and just see how it went from being initially pretty disappointing to me as a fan on a personal level, but only continued to get better and better as time went on, as Kubo slowly unraveled the layers on this thing, and yet still kept us guessing as to what was even true and what was a lie. Absolutely perfect for perhaps the slipperiest character in the entire series. Before we get started, guys, we are so very close to 150,000 subscribers, so if you want to help push us over that milestone, it would be greatly appreciated, and you get more Bleach content like this every single week. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up as well to help support me and the channel. And if you want to take that support another step further, we do have a Patreon for the channel as well. Where you can get videos like this one early and you can support me for as little as a dollar a month. To everyone who is supporting me over there, as always, enormous thank you goes out to each and every one of you. I really couldn't do it without you and I appreciate it so much. Before Gein's even activated his Bankai, he is playing mind games with Ichigo, trying to throw him off by slinging these enormous, almost abstract numbers at Ichigo that are so difficult to comprehend. It makes it very hard for Ichigo to really get some kind of a visual in his head as to what Gein's Bankai might actually be like. Gein flippantly mentions that his Shikai Shinzo is capable of reaching the length of a hundred swords put together, and his Bankai can go even further than that, as Gein claims it can reach a length of up to eight miles long. And while that might sound impressive, trying to visualise that is no easy feat, and at the end of the day is a totally pointless and, like I said, arbitrary number to throw out there. It serves no purpose at all except for to distract Ichigo from the true danger of Gein's Bankai. And I love that. I love how this Bankai is presented. Now that we've been able to see it in its entirety, you get the real sense of this creeping sneakiness about the way Gein goes about talking about it. And I think that is so fantastically well done, and just a brilliant character moment all around. The way Kubo is able to encompass Gein's character in the way he presents his Bankai is so clever. If I'm being honest, I think Gein might win the award for the coolest Bankai activation page ever. There's just this amazing sense of slithery motion to it, from Gein's curved pose, as he says, Bankai, to the rolling speech bubbles that seem to be moving down the page. I think that looks so awesome, to the fact that the very panels themselves have this curvature to them. 
Everything about the whole page looks fantastic and is designed to give off this snake-like serpentine feel. And of course, on top of that, it's probably the single best shot of Gein with his eyes open in the entire series. And of course, there's the fantastic foreshadowing as well, with Gein's Bankai's name being Kamishini no Yari, which translates to God-Killing Spear, which is prophetic of what Gein would attempt to do when trying to assassinate Aizen about 20 chapters or so from here. However, like I said, going off of this initial reveal, I was pretty disappointed to say the least. I mean, my mind was racing for ideas and thoughts of what Gein's Bankai could be. I thought maybe he would summon this massive snake construct behind him or something like that. I have no idea what I was thinking, but I was just so excited for it. So for it to just be, or at least just seem, on the surface to be another very long, even longer version of his blade, I was disappointed. And Ichigo blocks it immediately as well, and counters with a Getsuga Tencho. So I was sitting there thinking, like what is going on how can that all, how can that be all that Gein has to show but just like that a new ability of Gein's Bankai is shown off that instantly makes it more dangerous the colossal blade of Kamishini no Yari can return almost instantaneously to its original size at the blink of an eye. This adds an entirely new layer of danger to Gein's Bankai, turning it suddenly from this seemingly unwieldy, useless massive blade into a sniper-like power. As Ichigo notes, he thinks that even though Gein's blade is shortened again, Gein hasn't actually deactivated his Bankai, and that now they're clashing up close. The moment Gein points his blade towards Ichigo, it could be all over. And of course, this is where we see Gein's intelligence coming into play as well. Now that we know his Bankai can shrink right back down instantly, it feels like that first reveal, that initial reveal, was nothing but simple bluster on his part. Nothing but a random boast to really throw Ichigo off, while actually concealing the truth true danger within. By simply swinging his massive blade at Ichigo like that and allowing Ichigo to block it, Gein was letting him think he had the upper hand, but now he's drawing Ichigo in to fight at close range. By proclaiming his Bankai to be effectively useless since Ichigo's managed to stop it once already, and deciding to fight instead up close and lunging towards Ichigo and clashing with the small blade, what Gein does is force Ichigo's hand. The truth is that throughout all of this, Gein never stops using his Bankai, but it's also a nice way of showcasing Ichigo's perceptiveness as well as he picks up on this successfully. Gein leaps into the air above Ichigo, but rather than bringing his blade down on him, he instead darts to the side and feints and snipes Ichigo through the shoulder with Kamishini no Yari. And there you see the danger that Ichigo was worried about already. The fact that if Gein pointed it towards Ichigo's chest, for instance, he could instantly be taken out. As it slashes Ichigo's shoulder, Gein brings it down like a colossal tidal wave, sending this massive wall of dust erupting up across almost the entirety of of Karakura Town itself, but Ichigo thinks he sees an opening and he dives towards Gein, but of course Gein can retract his sword literally at the speed of sound essentially and manages to lock blades with Ichigo again. The fact that Gein seems to have this near instantaneous switch between offensive and defensive means you now have a Bankai that is considerably more versatile than it first appeared. But this next scenario is honestly so cool because Gein just plays into Ichigo's thought process. Ichigo thinks that he has Gein's Bankai all figured out and to his credit he's done a decent job of wading through Gein's lies and deception and half-truths to kind of get to the core of what Gein's Bankai can do, or at least what Ichigo thinks it can do based on what he's been shown so far. But as Ichigo seems to explain exactly what he thinks Gein's Bankai does, Gein plays along, saying that, okay, yeah, you figured it out, so now, because you figured it out, I'll reward you by showing you exactly how fast it extends and contracts. And so Gein simply claps his hands. Gein tells Ichigo that his Bankai moves 500 times faster than that sound, and Ichigo is obviously shocked and horrified by this, because Ichigo thinks he has figured out the true power, the true danger of Gein's Bankai being its speed, and Gein plays up to that notion, saying to Ichigo, basically saying, yeah, you're right, this is how fast it goes, and that is its true danger. It's not the longest Sanpakuto, it is the fastest Sanpakuto. But this is all bluster again, it's all lies again, except this time Ichigo is falling for it because he thinks that he is right about 
the true nature of Gein's Bankai. Ichigo doesn't catch on this time that Gein is playing the exact same game with him that he was at the start of their fight, continuing to tell him these absurdly massive numbers in an effort to throw him off the scent. Gein reveals a couple of really cool new abilities for his Bankai later on, Buto and Buto Renjin, again effectively just this pure sniper shot where he's able to hold his Zanpakuto in front of his chest and the blade instantly goes out and comes back in again like a snake lashing out at its victim. And Buto Renjin is kind of that, but about a million times, like a, just a torrent of blades coming firing out of the end of his Zanpak toe, almost like a Gatling gun of sorts, which is really, really cool to see. But even later on, even after entering the real Karakura town with Aizen himself, Gin never disengages his Bankai. And again, that's really cool imagery, because Gin's Bankai can effectively look exactly like his Shikai at all times, it is hiding in plain sight, exactly like Gein does. Again, incredibly shady, very sneaky, and you never quite know the true nature of what his blade is. He could be in Bankai at any time, which means if he's going to point his blade at you, you could be about to die. And that sense of lethality behind Gein's Bankai is such a perfect representation of him, the snake, the cold-blooded serpent that will lash out, that will strike out and finish off its enemy at any time. And it just plays up to that whole idea of unease that Gein really gives off, that sense of unease, as Rukia even mentions in the Soul Society arc, even just being around him as he spoke, made her feel as though she was being strangled by snakes. This is that same idea. You could just be around this character if he's holding his Zanpak toe and have no, no idea if he was actually in Bankai or not. But of course, cut through the talk about how long his Bankai is and cut through the talk about how fast his Bankai is and we reach the truth about Kamishini no Yari. It's true power hidden away at the centre of it all. When Gein attempts to kill Aizen, he reveals to him that much in the same way as he did to Ichigo earlier, he lied to Aizen long ago about how his Bankai works. It's not the longest Sanpakuto and it's not the fastest Sanpakuto either, although I do wonder what could possibly compete with him in either of those categories. Its true ability is that for a split second, when it expands and contracts again, the entire blade turns to dust, imperceptible to the human eye, but it does disappear entirely. Inside the very center of the blade itself lies a deadly poison which is able to completely destroy and kill cells. And for the split second that it turns to dust, Gein can leave one of the fragments of his blade inside the body of his victim, which is coated in that dangerous substance. Now I have a few questions actually about how this actually works and if there's more even to this than meets the eye as well. Every single time Gein expands and contracts his Bankai, does it turn to dust? Like when he was doing it against Ichigo, is it doing that same ability? And if it is, does it always leave a fragment of itself inside its victim if it if it actually goes through them? Of course, Ichigo doesn't get stabbed in the same way Aizen does right through the center of the chest. He only gets nicked on the shoulder. But if it does leave a fragment inside its victim every single time, is that something Gein can control or is it just something that happens passively with his Bankai? When Gein shows Aizen that he has left a chunk of his blade inside his heart, it's actually a sizable fragment of the blade that's missing. So again, is that down to Gein himself? Can he decide how much of his sword he leaves inside someone and how much, it, how much poison does it actually take to kill an opponent as well? The fact that it is... Even though it looks like a sizable chunk, it is still a fairly small amount and it's enough to completely rupture the body of second stage Hogyoku transformation Aizen means this stuff is pretty potent. It seems like it is up to Gein himself as to whether or not he can choose to leave a fragment inside the body of his victim or not, because he actually says to Aizen that when I contracted my sword that time I left a fragment of its blade within you. So it does seem like it's up to Gein to make these, I guess, literally split second decisions. Gein then places his hand on Aizen's chest and says, kill Kamishini no Yari. So I also wonder if maybe the poison doesn't actually activate and begin to break down until Gein utters that command. So again, I kind of wonder if Gein stabbed Say Gein stabbed Ichigo in the chest during their fight and left a fragment of his blade with inside him. Could Gein then just leave that for ages and then later on 
away away from Ichigo, say kill Kamishini no Yari, and Ichigo's body would suddenly start to break down, or does Gein have to be making physical contact at the time? There are a lot of questions regarding this Barnakai which we don't have the answers to. But of course, the true ability of Kamishini no Yari is really cool, perhaps the most literal representation of a snake we have yet. The idea of a snake lashing out, leaving poison inside its victim before they even know what's hit them is really cool. And honestly, it feels like a Zanpak toe that would be really well suited to somebody in the second division. But if we take a closer look at the subtleties here as well, we can see that the true nature of Gein's Bankai, and therefore lying at the very centre of his soul, is a reference to his childhood friend Rangiku. Her Zanpakuto, Hainiko, allows her blade to turn to dust, or ash essentially, um, and which can then be used to injure people. And Gin's Bankai turning to dust, Gin's blade turning to dust in much the same way as Rangiku's turns to ash, is a really nice reference to the bond they shared so long ago. But that's basically it for Gin Ichimaru's Bankai Kamishiri no Yari. It started out really disappointing for me, but I was being strung along by both Gein and Kubo, whose writing for this character and for his Bankai was completely genius, as far as I'm concerned. The fact that I eventually was like, oh, this Bankai's actually very, very cool and very, very lethal. It's dangerous. And I love how versatile it is as well, the more Gein explained it. But all of that was both bluster and a lie, as well designed to distract and pull the eye away. And I just think that is so very clever and just a brilliant representation of who Gein actually is. Basically somebody who exists to be sneaky, to be underhanded and to be shady and to kind of hide and slither along until he finds his next victim. Brilliantly well handled and I have to say that the Bankai went from being disappointing to being a genuine favourite. But that's it for the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Gein's Bankai. Did you enjoy it like I did? Did you have that same slow realisation as what his Bankai was actually like and how useful it really was? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't done already. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll catch you later. And I'll see you then.